Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to tell you guys about the good and bad of KSP. The best parts and the worst parts. So let's get started. I guess we'll start with the we'll start with the ba bad parts, get those out of the way. So Kerbal Space Program has an extremely steep learning curve when it comes to the game. I mean it took me personally um, just <clears throat> I would say simply hitting the moon, not landing on it, but hitting it, 10 hours, right? And I had already actually watched tutorials on how to orbit. But um, along with that steep learning curve, it involves experimentation and trial and error. So it's actually quite easy to learn how to be really good at the game. Now, the steep learning curve is, I guess, a limiting factor, but it uses it to its advantage. But another bad thing is just how long it takes to do some things in the game. I mean, to get to the farthest planet out there, after you set up your orbit, you can time warp and it takes like 10 minutes, I think. Five or 10 minutes just to get to the place. And there's actually mods that have increased time warp, so you don't have to wait, you know, you only have to wait a couple minutes. So it takes a long time to do some things in Kerbal Space Program. but. The final thing that uh, Kerbal Space Program does wrong is the developers just don't develop it as much anymore as you would expect for a game like Kerbal Space Program. I mean, they were really, really active, and now they just can't. I believe because the game got bought by Take-Two or they were working on the Xbox version or something, but they just haven't really been updating the game a lot. So there's not much content in it, and you know, mods are slowing down, so the actual development and modding community of the game has just slowed down. But those are the only three bad things I can think of when it comes to Kerbal Space Program. And honestly, it's not that bad compared to the good parts. The most, I would say the best, best part of this game is that you can play it literally however you want. Okay, let me explain what I mean by that. Um, let's say you're playing sandbox mode. You pop into sandbox mode, there's no limitations on anything, and you just pick a thing and do it. Um, there's resources in the game, actually, to orbit, land, make rovers, make bases in the air and on the ground. I mean, me personally, I just decided one time to make a land-based base on on the game's version of Mars, Duna. I think I did three or four pieces. There was another time where I made a satellite that would go to different moons of the system of the game's version of Jupiter and refuel on them. You know, I mean, complicated things like that. And it can be simple things, too. Like, um, maybe instead of putting a big antenna on a drone, you want to use relays. I've, I've done that before. Or maybe you want to play career mode. Career mode adds... The thing about the career mode in a game is it adds a little bit of RNG and a little bit of limiting factors when it comes to money, science, and reputation, yet it still keeps the sandbox element. I mean... In career mode, um, after the initial, there's eventually like, they work with, with, with what they got. You know, when you start out, you're just simply launching rockets and testing rocket parts, right? But as it gets more expansive, you have different missions you can do. You can decide, okay, I'm gonna send one tourist to Mars, or I'm gonna send 20 tourists to the moon. Or maybe you have the capacity to send some tourists to the moon and Mars in the same spaceship. You know, you, so you kind of, use those limiting factors and it actually adds to the sandbox because there's a part um the other day i was playing the kerbal space program and i was doing an insane moon tourism landing and it was going to make me a ton of money i think it made me like a million dollars in kerbal space program money and i was i had there's a part that i never ever used before it's like a side mounted rocket engine and putting four of those on my rocket after i did some math solved all my problems like I would never use that part otherwise because there's just more efficient parts so that's probably the best part of the game honestly is the sandbox and how when they limit the sandbox it creates another sandbox inside that limitation which is honestly genius game design like it's just genius the other good parts about Kerbal Space Program is the mods some of the mods you have to run on older versions of KSP but it's not really too bad it's, I mean, it's mods, right? You add more planets, you make a realistic solar system. You have career mode in realistic solar system. You have 
real-time building. One of the best, one of the most fun ways, I guess, or most realistic, I would say fun, but one of the most realistic ways to play a Kerbal Space Program is you can have, um, first you add a couple space parts into the game, like super big ones, and then you make a realistic solar system, you have resources, so food and water and oxygen, and you have a mod where every spaceship you decide to make has a time to build. So, in, if someone's gonna starve out in space, you can't just pop another rocket and go. You have to wait for it to build and they starve. So I think that, you know, mods like that create some awesome scenarios and better space stations, all sorts of stuff that I really like. And honestly, those two things alone, like the gameplay of Kerbal Space Program works perfectly and the planet system, but I think you have the sandbox, you have the mods, and you have the kind of, I would say, as you become more skilled in the game, you're rewarded in such an amazing way. The way this game rewards you is it allows you to do more. It's like, I remember the first time I landed on the moon. Then it made it so I had the skill to like land on planets with a basic rocket. And then I figured out how to come back from the moon. So I, you know, that skill set added, I could do more complicated projects. Once I figured out how to dock spaceships, I had no problem launching just a fuel tank into the sky that whose only job was to connect to a rocket so it could get farther. Like I could do that after experimenting with all these different ways of playing the game and it rewards you for exploring and pushing your limits and trying out different things even in the most minute of things like I made a a drill rocket right I was already really good at landing and for making the rocket it could drill just fine except it didn't have enough battery charge on it to last a full day on the thing it was on so I had to stop time drill start stop drill start stop drill over and over again and so then all of my drills after that have had enough battery to where they can just spin around and drill. So, I mean, it's just a great game. I can say there's the good parts and the bad parts of KSP, but it's a great game. And it's just an amazing game. I can't say enough good about it. I would never... This version that it's in now, I think it's 1.4. As long as this version is accessible, I would all, I would recommend this version to everyone. Every gamer out there. It's just such an awesome game. But guys, I would love to know your most favorite and least favorite parts of Kerbal Space Program. Go ahead and share those in the comments below. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games. And I'll see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or Steam It post of whatever I decide to make.